So I've just come up with an idea for a little riff for the rave stab section. So I'm actually straight back into this since the last clip. Um, I'm going to copy this to a spare segment. It's just the beat. So I have something to keep in time with. This might take a while to get in time. I think I might have it finally, you know. Let's definitely save that. baseline there to be honest with you but let's just work with that actually I am going to delete the base <laughs> Some embellishments to that in a bit. Uh, copy then kind of copy that to a new segment and then take out the drums. <laughs> See what happens when I go into that from the beat. drums so I'm gonna do the trick where I create extra instruments Yeah. 
It's not bad. The, clearly the transition needs work. Getting there. Uh, I'm going to extend that segment by copying it onto itself. didn't quite is adding anything. Probably better without <coughs> any um, effect when the riff comes in. All right, that's saved. I'm going to take a little rest now. So it's been a couple of days and I've had a little chance to think about the track. I haven't worked on it in the meantime. I'm going to start now. There's some changes I want to make and I might um, sample some vocals in as well. So let us um, get going. So I wanted to change the bit where the um, just before where the beat comes in to make it sort of build a bit more. So this is what we've got at the moment. Now that's It's all very well, um, but I kind of want to do it like a, a sort of a roll. So going into step edit on the track back. That's the first A1. Um, uh. 
start by saving what I've done because I might do the roll wrong and then I'll have to go back. Um, I can reload a particular segment of the song very quickly from the disc. So it makes sense to, um, it makes sense to save it. sounds like it's already sounding better I think sounding better so I also wanted to record a vocal into this again from the Jungle Warfare CD since that's the um, the theme of this um, track I don't have a huge amount of vocal samples on Jungle Warfare there is one that I quite liked. That's nice. That simply says fire. Fire! And that's it. So that sample is um, apparently 0.6 seconds long. And I, we should definitely have enough for that. Yes, we've got 1.4 seconds left in the SP. So let's find a spare. I'm gonna sample it into B8 because I don't think I'm gonna to need to um, do anything related to the bass sound which is next to it. I like to put my mutes for particular sounds next to the sound itself just so that I can find it. So in this case A3 I've got the string and I'm muting it on A4 but I don't think it's a very short bass sound so I shouldn't need to mute it. So that's sampled now, let's listen to it. Truncate that so I've got 0.8 seconds of sample time remaining now. I'm guessing I'm not going to use the fire at the same time as I use the fire rave step, so I'm going to use the same channel. Sounds a bit odd because <coughs> the rave stab has like a ton of chorus and reverb on it. I'll leave it there for now. Nicer, doesn't it? So I'm not using the um, S3000 in this track. In fact, I actually rarely do use the S3000. Um, so I can use its channel for the fire. 
because I do definitely want to include it because I think it will sound really good. That's channel one. Fire! 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 A little bit of reverb. Taking out all the low end. Fire! Taking that very nicely, actually. And the low end removal. I've inserted it into that pattern with the step uh, edit. That's not actually where I had in mind. I've erased that. I'm going to tap it in by hand. now let's um, save the sounds and the sequences <coughs> so let's just um, hear where we are <laughs> Okay, not bad. I'm still not quite happy with the fire. The other thing I don't like is the, um, it just sort of cuts into the rave stabs a little bit too suddenly. And the bass that goes on while the rave stabs are on is, is clearly too simple, but it was just a placeholder anyway. So um, <coughs> let's have a look at this fire. I think that's the one. Great. What was the next thing I wanted to sort out was the bass line in the um, in the stabs bit. Oh, I've got my controller keyboard here.
listen to the song. So what I've done because I'm fairly happy. better still not quite pleased with it Let's save what we've done and then I'm going to review that baseline again because it really sucks at the moment try something else again though because you can always do better I think Good, I'm going to add an extra note though.
listen to the whole song. Does sound good. Probably need to come up with an outro now. Mm. One and a half minutes, that's okay. I want to add a fire to this pattern. Right, so the plan now is to have something to eat. Um, but for the track, I think, um, well, it clearly needs an ending. And I'd like to smooth some of those transitions in the last part, just before it goes into the stabs. And then when it switches from the stabs back into the original theme. Some stuff to think about, but I think it's going well. So um, let's just listen to it and um, I will figure out what uh, needs doing. thinking um, from listening to that is it probably needs a kind of a crazier beat on the section with the stab. <laughs> uh, 
in other words, that section, um, that's four bars long, so it shouldn't take too long to come up with something a bit more exciting. Um, let's erase the existing beat that's there, and then I will um, come up with something a bit more exciting for that part. Listen to that. That's a bit shit, actually. <laughs> I'll stop that again. Magic doesn't always come easy. I, I love the SP-1200, but sometimes I really just wish it, it was a tracker because, you know, cutting up and rearranging breakbeats is so much easier in, in a tracker. Yeah, I would love to... Um, have an Atari uh, ST MIDI tracker so that I could like sequence all this stuff on that. There are some good ones for the Amiga like um, Octomed and um, some really good tunes were written with that but it's uh, funny that even though the Atari's got built-in MIDI ports um, yeah no no MIDI trackers. I expect serious producers were using MIDI on Atari. I watched a um, documentary about the early techno scene and I saw um, West Bam was uh, using Atari as a sequencer. But um, actually my favorite like drum and bass producers like DJ Zinc and that's so on, they all used Amiga. Um, Mike Slammer and DJ Red Alert used uh, Amiga as well. I guess, um, you know, there was an interesting battle there. The thing is though, although people sort of go on about, oh, the Atari's had MIDI ports, it was a choice for like the professional musician. Honestly, when you look at the Amiga, it was very cheap and easy to get a MIDI interface for uh, Amiga and um, I think that sort of nullifies the advantage the ST had. Um, one great thing about the ST, it had that really nice mono display so you could use it for hours without your kind of eyes hurting. Okay, it's not sounding bad, but yeah, it does need more. The um, SP-1200, I think, is really the closest experience, at least in, you know, real hardware that comes close to using a tracker, because everything is all in the box, and you don't need to go anywhere else to, um, to like import sounds or anything, you, you can bang things out really quickly. It's also like that, not to keep bang going on about Amiga, but if you've ever used ProTrack on Amiga, it's a beautiful workflow. It just, um, so quickly you can build up a track. 
but the disadvantage with Amiga, I don't really like the, the quality of the sound. I don't know if it's the cheap sampling cartridges that they had or the, um, you know, just the, the Paula chip, but um, I think in retrospect, if you listen to a Amiga tracker module, it, it sounds kind of thin. Um, it hasn't held up well. You really just sort of have to imagine how it's going to sound. Which isn't that bad at the moment. Sounds like a tune now, finally. Let's unmute the rest of the shit. All right. I'm going to save that because I'm uh, fairly happy. So I, one thing I didn't like there was the transition between what I can see as segments five and four. And I think what it needs is the stabs taking out just before the end. It's funny, you can tell that this thing is based on quite a slow CPU because when you want to step back, it, it takes forever. I assume it's running through some kind of linked list or something in the operating system. And it starts from the beginning and goes forward. That last stab needs to come out. The other thing that's annoying about the SP1200 is the um, buttons get very sticky. Um, you have to clean them every few months, but um, they are actually maintainable switches. They built this thing like a tank, so you can just take the button off with a thin knife. You can lever it out. And then underneath you can see the contacts and you can actually clean them, which I, which I probably need to do because this one here is a bit dodgy. <laughs> Um, that's exactly what I wanted. I'll save that. Let's uh, have another listen to the track. Let's see where I think it needs work. Um, clearly there needs to be an ending added. Fire! 
All right, I do like that. Um, needs a couple of things to finish it though. Um, I would like to soften the transition that goes from like the main section into the stabs. That's a little bit of a kind of a hard, um, a hard switch. And clearly it needs uh, an ending as well. Now I might have patterns for an ending already created. transition was probably a little bit too gradual. I like that transition but there needs to be, uh, I need to mute the break beats at the start of that sequence. I'm going to mess with this pattern some more, so I'm going to make a copy of it. Um, but before I do that, I want to um, Remove all the extra stuff that I into it so I don't make a complete hash of that. A lot of SP1200 users will literally just stay in 16th notes the whole time. <coughs> but, um, Generally, I stay in eighth notes and switch to sixteenths when I really need it because uh, my live finger drumming's a bit shit, and um, I can just about play in eighths, but I can't play in sixteenths yet, unless I'm very lucky. So one of the things that is a bit annoying with the SP1200 is in order to, you know, start playing your song from a particular step, you, there, you actually have to go into a menu in order to do that. Um, but, you know, whatever. Generally, this thing is extremely... Um, smooth and easy to use though I, I am it's a beautifully designed interface I do need a step at the end, which um, stops the string. 
Although it is kind of nice have it, just having it um, go on like that. So what I might do is um, try to play something different as a um, outgoing phrase. Um, so I can do that with this MIDI controller keyboard. That's good. I wonder what it would sound if I play, played that sinister laugh at the end as well. <laughs> Um, actually, no, I decided I don't like it. <laughs> uh, sometimes you have to hear things in the context of the rest of the track. And it sounded amazing when I just <laughs> played it like that, but um, it sounds kind of cheap, um, actually. Maybe the whooshing sound will be better. Sounds good. Let's save that. Um, that was that transition I wanted to fix. But I'm actually going to time the song because, um, and I'm quite happy with that as a composition. I into making shorter tunes at the moment, more like you know two to three minutes, but. I think there's such a thing as having um, too short a, a, of a tune. Okay, so that was like 151, something like that. Uh, yeah, it's not bad. I, I will make it longer at some point though. But I think for now, I will probably um, save that and um, make some dinner. Welcome back. I'm going to get the track done this session.
can probably extend out that end section a little bit. Uh, let's do that. Uh, yeah, that's sounding like a tune now. Um, add some extra fires. Okay, I'm going to modify um, the main segment to have a transition. Now I've used segment four at the end of the track as well, so I'm going to have to make a copy of it, but that's okay. <laughs> I'm going to switch to 16th notes because I think they're... Yeah, I thought so then. A little beep there. SP is playing up. Drama. All right, I'm going to stop recording, see what's wrong with the SP. All right, we're back. Old technology, but she's still working. <laughs> I prized the top off and modeled some connectors and it's working. So I think the track might be finished now actually. So let's um, just save it and give it a play. And I will also time it. Two minutes five seconds I will listen to this track again over the next few days to see how I like it but I would say it is done basically um, mission accomplished a few hours we've got a complete rave track thanks for watching this making of I've tried to cut it up so it's not too boring consider liking and subscribing and uh, see you again